So I am really happy to see all of you. It's wonderful to be with old friends, new friends, just to take a moment to celebrate while we're launching the future. We still, let's just give the thousands of people who have contributed to this venture a hand together. Now, at the, at the risk of becoming learned rather than a learner, this section is about what we've learned. <laughs> and I think there are some universal things that we've learned and, and that we maybe have long known. Humanity may have long known this in some ways. We believe in the inherent goodness and the sacred value of every human being. We believe that the talents and intelligence of young people around the world who are born into poverty through no fault of their own are an enormous, untapped resource for humanity. We have tested these convictions with 135,000 young people. Now, after 35 years, we stand poised for a new level of impact. We have confirmed in every community and over the decades that the power of love reflected through profoundly caring and respectful attention to each young person, coupled with real opportunities for them to learn essential skills while building something tangible of value to their communities, while also belonging to a caring and responsible community of peers, and adults, that peer group support is just as important as the adult support because they're building a new value system together. And then also belonging to a larger network like this network, like the National Youth Build Network, like the International Youth Build Network that Wilfred said, once in Youth Build, always in Youth Build. We do recite that often. Uh, for the well-being and service of all and service to others, it works reliable miracles in liberating the positive energies and determination of all people, no matter how much they have suffered from injustice and mistreatment of all kinds. Then when we add to the basic Youth Build Comprehensive Program sturdy pathways to post-secondary education, employment and registered apprenticeships, individual volunteer mentors from the corporate sector and from local communities to support that transition into employment and post-secondary the resources to build our housing green and our infrastructure green to protect this planet, and opportunities for young leaders to speak and lead toward policy changes that would diminish poverty or eliminate poverty and increase opportunity worldwide, we multiply our impact. You know that with the support of our loyal philanthropic partners like Ford and Mott and other, the other foundations who are here who have strengthened the capacity of Youth Build USA to be nimble and to respond to reality and to be a learning organization. We have learned how to create partnerships between the less nimble governments <laughs> uh, and with corporations. We're learning how to build the corporate partnerships. We, we have a long way to go to get that really robust, but it's exciting, the potential that's there. Uh, and we've learned to create delivery systems that can weather political storms and economic down downturns. Even when the government shuts down, we will survive, although it's a stupid thing that they're doing. Uh, and we draw on the best of human aspirations across class, race, age, religion, and political party. Most of the time, it gives us great joy, although it can sometimes be very difficult. The only thing we lack to really max it, to open the doors of youth build to every young person who is knocking, and we're turning away thousands every year, is sufficient public awareness, political will, and the resources to open those doors. In the past three years, while youth build has expanded exponentially around the world, and Tim will tell us more about that later, it has slowed in the USA due to the public funding cutbacks that happened in 2010 and 2011. 50 programs have closed in the USA. Those young people that Jamie was talking about, in some communities they can't even find the youth build because it's gone. And this is a sin and a shame that we must turn around. That is a political challenge that is coupled with 
the fundraising resource challenge so that we can do the advocacy that we need to do. Another fact that we've learned everywhere, it's been demonstrated everywhere, that implementing any vision of change takes a multitude of creative leaders at the grassroots. The people that the Skoll Foundation has wisely called the social entrepreneurs who devote their passion and brilliance to overcoming society's failures and who enjoy doing it as part of a larger movement rather than working alone. In every community, in every country where Youth Build has thrived, there has been a local activist, a creative, community-based leader who has figured out how to implement our core principles on the ground with local partners and unique innovations. In a moment, we'll hear from three of these marvelous leaders. Everyone in this room, I know, you wouldn't be here, holds deep in your heart the aspiration for a more just and loving world, and you have all contributed to that goal in your own ways, not only through Youth Build, but myriad other ways that people here have worked for the well-being of humanity. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs>